this is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and uh, this is the eighth episode of Our Brockton, uh, and I'm proud uh, of the title, Our Brockton. That's exactly what it's all about. It's our city, everybody working in collaboration. And right now, coming up, we have a very, very important thing, not just in Brockton or in the Commonwealth, but in the country. We have our election. So I thought it would be uh, rightfully fitting to have my guest, and I'm honored to have her here. Cynthia Hogan is here today. Uh, and Cindy, it's great to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You have a lot going on right now. Yes, it is very, very busy. Busy, busy, yes, busy. I yes, think, it is. Could you, first of all, give a quick background? I mean, how long have you been working there? What is your current role? And then the day-to-day -day of what you're dealing with right now. Okay, so I have been in the elections office for 19 years. I have been the executive director for the last three years. Um, and we are dealing with unprecedented times with the COVID and uh, maintaining CDC gu guidelines and, and, and try to have an election with a, a, a probably an 80% turnout, which is probably one of the highest Yeah, elections. it's going to be historic. Yeah. Historic. And, and you, you do an awesome day-to-day -day job. September, the primary, everything was flawless. I know some people in Wood, too, were upset because West Elm Street was being constructed, reconstructed. Let me just tell you right now, it's open right now, so if you vote at the War Memorial or if you vote at the Guarded High Rise, you're set. You're set for next Tuesday. Talk to us about, because you've done this, you were the charge, you were leading this, the Westgate Mall. You're having in-person early voting at the Westgate Mall. It happened for a week in September. You came to me and said, Mayor, can we do it more? We agreed on two weeks going into November. Two weeks are done this coming Friday, which would be tomorrow. Talk to me about the success there. So I think that is, I think the Westgate Mall, I think people like going up there. It's roomy enough. I have had great feedback from it. We've had over almost 7,000 voters turn out to go to early voting. Um, yesterday, we are on Wednesdays, we're open till 7. That's one of our busiest days. Over 1,000 voters came in that day alone. Wow. So um, I'm That's expecting huge. a huge, yeah, I'm expecting probably we're at 11 percent now, a good 15 percent at least turnout at, at the Westgate Mall. And that's why I voted yesterday. I, I literally, I pulled up. Now it's, if you know what Joanna Fabrics is, right, the back side of the mall, you go in the Joanna Fabrics entrance, it's the old form of Payless, the old Dunkin' Donuts inside the mall. If you go there for Christmas, it's where Santa Claus sits, right on that side, <laughs> a little merry go round. And I was there, I went in with my chief of staff, Kerry Richards, everyone was awesome. It was sanitary, it was clean, they give you a pen, you get disposed of the pen, police officer there, it was safe, it was friendly, it was awesome, in and out in five minutes. Yeah. It's great, and, and you, you're leading the charge on that. Now it ends again on Friday, but there's a drop box outside of City Hall, right? It's a drop box, much like the drop box we used in September or, or at the library when you want to get rid of books. Talk to me about the Dropbox, because it's been, that's been working well, too. That has been working very well. People feel a lot more comfortable dropping their ballots in the Dropbox as opposed to dropping them in the mail. We do go out and empty that Dropbox every hour when, when we're open, and, um, and, and we have been getting a lot of ballots back that way. And I know that you said that we were going to probably have a police there. Yes, yeah, the so, so the Dropbox has been awesome, right? And so... If people, um, people have asked me, you know, Bob, uh, Mayor, whatever they call me, just call me Bob. Bob, if I drop it there, is it going to sit there? Because we learned last week in Boston, right, yes. some, some person uh, threw a match in there and boom, 12 ballots were destroyed. We, as Cindy said, we're doing it hour by hour. Now, over the weekend going into Halloween, Secretary Galvin had suggested that cities and towns of Massachusetts safeguard it. So I've already talked to Chief Gomes, Manny Gomes. There will be a police cruiser there 24-7, Saturday and Sunday. So if you're going to vote, you know, drive right in. You can pull right up, stick it in, and again, it's going to be emptied and it's safe and, and police officers will be there. Um, can you explain, because we have a lot of Brockton residents that proudly serve our nation. So they could be overseas, uh, federal ballots. Could you just explain the process of that? So if they're overseas or they're serving in the military, uh, of course, it would be very hard for us to mail them a ballot. They may never get it. So we email them ballots. So we have mailed out probably a little over 100 ballots to um, the overseas people who live in overseas and the military. 
and we've gotten 66 of those back. We've gotten a good response great. with that. Yes, it's very nice. I think it's great that we can allow the people that, especially that are in the military, allow them to still be able to vote even though they may be overseas. Absolutely, and, so. and, and absolutely, and that's great, and that's a good, that's a good response data-wise, statistics-wise. I guess a question that's come up, and, and I ran to your office and, and your staff without question answered me, if I postmark, I want to mail it to you. I want to mail it to the city hall, 45 School Street. I want to mail it. I want my ballot to count. And I mail it. When does it need to be postmarked, and how long after the election can you count it? Okay. So any ballot that gets dropped in the drop box, 8, 8 o'clock election night is the last time that we will count ballots from the drop box. From the drop box, from yes. From the drop box. Okay. But if you put it in the mail and it is postmarked November 3rd, we will, as long as we receive that ballot by November 6th, we will count that ballot. Great information. So, the two things to take away there. If you want to physically put it in the drop box, okay, U.S. Postal Service is not involved, you drop it off. 8 o'clock, that's when the polls close on November 3, Tuesday, next Tuesday, right? So that's it, 8 o'clock, and then it's shut off. 8.01, it's, it doesn't count. But if you go and you want to mail it, it has to be postmarked by November 3, okay? So we go up to Liberty Street or wherever you want to mail in the city of Brockton. It would get to Cindy's office. If it gets there on the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, it counts. If it gets there the 7th, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. So that's important information, very, very, very important information. So I guess, um, I guess my question would be, talk to us about the process and procedure, because people don't understand how complicated it is, how much time you spend on it to plan. This is a presidential election, but we also have state reps, congressmen, senators, county officials on the ballot. Express to me, like, how much time preparation do you have to do? So we start preparing. This one was a little different we, uh, because they were changing the rules all the time with the, with the COVID. But we start preparing in July for an election in September. There's, uh, there's a lot that goes into it, getting everything ready for election day. This, this time here, we also have to follow CDC guidelines, mm -hmm. so we have to make sure that we have masks and 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 every and all the workers are trained on on what is expected of the with the CDC guidelines with the six feet away and wiping everything down and keeping everything sanitary. We want the voters to be safe. We yeah. want the poll workers to be safe. So we're just we're just pushing what the CDC guidelines say: stay six feet away, wear a mask, keep your hands clean. And, and, that, and that's exactly what you've done. You've adhered to all the guidelines. So I show up, uh, I, I've already voted, right? I went to Westgate, but if I hadn't, I'd go to Hancock School. If I show up and I don't have a mask on, what's gonna happen? So if you don't have a mask on, we will have masks there to be provided for you. If you have an underlying health condition and you can't wear a mask, we will absolutely still allow you to vote. We'll just, you know, again, try to maintain maybe eight feet now, yeah. but, um, but we will have masks there if you need a mask. And if you can't wear one, we're still going to allow you to vote. Okay. And that's important information. One thing that you did, and, and you really, I, I, I applaud you because you, you took the initiative and it was awesome. Talk to us about the new polling ability. So when you go in, it looks different, right? There's little kiosks. What, what did you acquire that's going to help the, the voters? Because it's going to be new to some people. So, yeah. So we did acquire some new voting booths. The voting booths that we had were well they were old also but they were cloth and it's very hard to keep cloth sanitized and I, it's not, I didn't think that we could for early voting wash them every day I was trying to figure out a way that we could get something that would be e easily sanitized and, and, and maybe look good in the polling location mm -hmm. so we do get we did get new voting booths and I think that they were well worth it. Oh, yeah. Long, we've long time coming. We've long time coming. We've had other ones since, you know. I mean, your they're dad high quality. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, <laughs> there's no joke about that. But they, they, they look good. Yes. They're, they're clean. They, the they, sanitary. Yeah, yeah, everything. You can wipe uh, them down nice and easy. So they if can you didn't keep vote nice in September clean. and you vote in November, you're going to be really, really impressed. It's beautiful. Um, I guess we're going to be coming up to the end pretty soon, Cindy. So first of all, I want to thank you for your leadership in your department. It's my pleasure. Um, you have a, a lot of dedicated people, but you have a really difficult job. Um, but you don't just do elections. So what else do you do in your office? So in January, we deal with the city census. Yep. We do dog licensing. We, still, we certify papers for uh, anybody who wants to be on the ballot, nomination papers, uh, petitions. We certify names for petitions. Um, 
uh, registering to vote, um, absentee ballots, Everything. that kind of stuff. It's because a lot. You're, you're registering to vote all year long. Yes. And now you can do it online, where uh, before there was only a limited amount of places. So we get pages and pages of online voter registrations daily. Yeah. But, you know, then people move out, people come in, you know, but... Well, it's it's like people say, well, you work in the election, so you only work September and no, November. No way. But we work all year <laughs> oh, long. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and I know that. I see you guys in there working really hard. So a couple of things, just to recap about COVID. So COVID is here. You're taking all the precautions. In fact, I want to applaud you and Janice Fitzgerald at the Council on Aging because you worked in collaboration where some of the part-time seasonal employees that were helping us in September, we took them and we put them in a safe environment at the Council on Aging, which is closed. Um, extremely important and, and really a wonderful thing that you, you did. Um, people are going to feel safe when they go there. Um, they're going to feel that if they don't have a mask, one will be provided. Um, I think the biggest thing that people must realize is that their vote's going to matter. Their yeah, vote's going to count. Um, that everything is being done professionally, uh, health-wise, safety. And again, my, this is my humble suggestion, right? We are giving the liberty to vote. That's, that's our right as American citizens. So I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, unenrolled, independent, right? Take the opportunity and cast your vote. It's so important for the city of Brockton, right, and for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the nation as a whole. Um, Cindy, do you have any, any last thoughts? I don't, but I, uh, speaking of uh, Janice at the Council A and Age, and I really couldn't thank her enough because of all the space that she had over there because it was closed and the, and the poll workers that we hired to do all the ballot stuffing and everything, they, they all did a great job. The guys from Public Property, I, I, the whole team, I could not have done it without them. So, Absolutely, it's a team so, effort. Yeah, so I'm so thankful to have the people behind me that I do. And we'll get past Tuesday, right? And yes, if there's any Clarkton residents <laughs> in future elections that want to be considered to be a poll worker and get compensated, how, how do they, how do they, do they just call your so office and find out? So they can just call my office. Okay. We'd send them an application. There is an application online now okay. also. And we're always looking so, for multiple language speakers as yes, well. Yes, multilingual language. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Because well, we're a very diverse community. Absolutely. And That's what makes Brockton some, Brockton. Right, so, some um, multilingual. I want to thank you. I mean, you took time out of your schedule. You're busy, 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 busy right now busy, to busy. come here because you understand that expressing the message is important to Brockton residents. Cindy Hogan's been my guest. I want to thank her for her dedication. She's a great public servant. She's got a lot going on right now. Uh, again, this is Mayor Robert Sullivan. This was the eighth episode of Our Brockton. I will be back next week for the ninth episode with a surprise guest. I won't disclose it this time, but you'll be excited. So again, thank you. And know that it is an honor and privilege to serve as your mayor, and we will continue to work together to make it a better Brockton. Thank you so much.